Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video we are going to create the most effective build for one of the most legendary and special weapons in all of Elden Ring. The Moon Veil is a magic based katana that was incredibly famous for being insanely broken the first weeks after the game's release. It was so powerful and fun that they decided to nerf it not once but multiple times, leaving us with a decent version of the weapon. However, many people stopped using it, seeking more powerful and useful alternatives, and as if that wasn't enough, they also reduced the stance damage of the projectiles from Trunching Moonlight along with Terra Magica just a few hours before the release of the DLC. But don't worry cause with the riser up we are going to make this fantastic blade shine like the brightest full moon. With the DLC in our hands we now have multiple tools to create an extraordinary build for this legendary weapon. The moon veil doesn't need a detailed introduction, everyone knows its capabilities, the power of its amazing unique skill and how fun it is to play with. So I'll focus mainly on explaining the key change we'll apply to our old moon veil configuration to make it as powerful as possible. First of all I'm going to show you the build and then we will be the major boss of the DLC without taking a single hit. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. We are going to be using the Moon Veil on plus 10 and then still we have available to cast our main boss. We are going to use the Astro's Glintstone staff to cast our Magicka as fast as possible, but as we are using a high level dex build, feel free to use any other staff you want. And if you wish you can use any weapon with the Raptor of the Mist of War to easily dodge the Radan's light explosion attack. The best looking armor set combination for this character is the Theoler set with the Circlet of Light. Anyways you know that in this channel we prefer the max performance possible so we are going to be using the Rakshasa's armor set. But I mentioned the previous armor cause it looks really nice and you can use it to fight regular enemies. And for the boss fights you can use the Rakshasa's armor set to get the most out of your build. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Magic Scorpion Charm, the Blade of Mercy and the All Lord's Talisman. And you might be wondering why not use the Two-Handed Sword Talisman or the Relana's Cameo. The reason why I'm not using these talismans is because of my playstyle. I will begin with the Relana's Cameo. This talisman has a huge problem in my opinion. If you want to receive the buff of this talisman for your next attack you have to wait a lot. This will leave you exposed most of the time and it is not going to be worth it. If you do it outside the arena it seems like you don't have to wait that much but once you are in the boss fights you will notice that this is not very optimal. And in order to demonstrate that I'm going to quickly fight Renala and you will see that it is a little bit complicated to perform that. So let's see that, let's just start the fight and let's dodge these attacks and let's charge the attack and there is where, where we can use it, it is very very late. So let's try again, here, there is where it is active but I, I took those hits, you got me, it's too risky. And there, I didn't even connect the hit, bro. So it is not the most optimal way to use this build. In that case, I prefer just attacking her as fast as I can. And this way, I will be able to dodge the next attacks and prepare to keep attacking without uh, compromising too much, you know? Maybe here, it is a good chance to use it. And even there, it is not it is not very, very optimal. As you can see, this talisman is a little bit overrated. So the only situations where I believe this talisman is truly useful is when you are fighting regular enemies that doesn't have that much HP and you can one-shot them if you charge the attack. In that case, that will be completely worth it. And in fights where the repost animation of the enemies is quite slow, such as the Dragon Veil, you might believe that it is a very good idea to charge the attack but it turns out that it is better to keep spamming the skill instead of charging it to get the benefits from this talisman. For that reason I prefer to use the Blade of Mercy cause the skill of this weapon despite it has been nerfed as I like to play at close range that nerf is not that bad. As long as you play at close range and you hit the target with the weapon and the projectile you are going to deal almost the same amount of stance damage that you were dealing before which will allow you to deal a lot of critical hits in one single combat. That's why one of the best talismans you can use is the Blade of Mercy or if you don't have it the Dagger Talisman. Now why I'm not using the two-handed sword talisman. The thing with this talisman is that it only works with the basic attacks. It will not work with the unsheath Ash of War and it is a little bit obvious cause with this attack we are only using one hand. But I recognize that this is only a personal reason related with my playstyle so I prefer to use the skill most of the time. But plenty of you will prefer to use the basic moveset maybe. So in that case the two-handed sword talisman is a great option for you. I prefer to use the all lords talisman cause this thing will increase the duration of our buffs. It is not a big difference but in long fights 
fights such as Radan, Veil, and other fights where the enemy has a lot of HP, you are going to lose the buff in the second half of the match. And that is very, very bad. So the Old Lord's Talisman will allow you to have your buff active the entire fight. But another great combination of talismans for the Moon Veil is the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. Because as you know, the katanas are extremely fast. So you are going to easily proc these uh, buffs without any kind of trouble. And that will allow you to buff your skill as well. There are multiple ways to build this weapon around multiple talismans. I accept that you use the two-handed sword talisman. It's a very decent talisman as well. If you don't want to use the old lord's talisman, go ahead and use the two-handed sword talisman. It's perfect. But I truly do not recommend you to use the Relana's cameo. It's completely overrated for PvE scenarios, especially with boss fights. If you really want to use the Relana's cameo, you have to be aware that the damage is not going to be worth the risk. You have to wait a lot of time to activate it, and in most scenarios, you will not be able to use it effectively. But as I always say, feel free to use the talisman combination that goes better with your playstyle. In our flask of wondrous physics, we are going to be using the blood sucking crack tier and the magic shrouding crack tier. If you don't want to use the blood sucking crack tier because you don't want to lose a little bit of HP, then feel free to use the stone bark crack tier. It is a great alternative to combine with the transient moonlight skill. You will deal a lot of stance damage, you will get some critical hits, and you will be able to deal a lot of damage with your setup. And this build consumes a decent amount of stamina, so be sure to craft some pickle torten legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on vigor, 20 on mind, 35 on endurance, 60 on dexterity and intelligence, and 33 on faith. Golden Vow, Howl of Shabriri, and Terra Magica are going to be our main buffs. To buff our character with this build, we are going to use our Flask of Wondrous Physic first, then we are going to cast Golden Vow, and immediately after that, we are going to use our Pickle Torten Leg, which is completely optional. Now it's time to use our body buff, which in this case is Howl of Shabriri. Now switch to your staff, refill your FP, your HP, and once you are in the arena, if the boss is optimal, you will be able to cast Terra Magica, and that way you are going to deal a little bit of damage. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we begin with the boss fights? Hey there, bad boy. Amazing. Come on, baby. Let's do this. Oh, amazing. Oh, goodbye. That's what I'm talking about. That is a good kill, guys. Amazing. Nice. Quickly. Let's go, baby. Okay, let's destroy this bad boy, guys. Come on. There you go. Oh, that was close. Charge it. Oh my god, that, I didn't dodge that one properly, but thankfully I was, uh, I, I'm still alive. Quickly. Bro, why in the actual thing this guy is not broken yet? Anyways, doesn't matter. Let's go, baby. Here we go. No, you are there. You are taking me out from it. Okay, I'll, I'll go back here. This might be a smart move. Okay. Amazing. Finish here. Nice. Nice, baby. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Beautiful. Because you have to wait a lot to make it effective. You have to read the mind of this guy in order to do it properly, bro. 
Nice. Oh, I love the fast attacks of the Moonbill. That was... Okay, I'll take it. That is amazing. Oh, bad mistake, bad boy. It's over for you, baby. <laughs> nice. Wow, you are dirty, bro. Okay, this guy. <laughs> this guy is something else, honestly. Again. That is amazing, I guess. Come on. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye. Amazing, bro. Let's go, guys. Okay, guys, let's destroy this bad boy. Let's go, baby. Come on. Hey, Bale. There you go, bad boy. Jump attack now. Oh, no. Ah, oh, this means heavy attack. Okay. Okay. And jump attack. And he's going down here. Let's do it. This is a lot better than using the other thing, bro. There you go! 